Buried deep in the heart of downtown Boston is the Boston Bugle Building. It's easy to miss as it is surrounded by a number of other tall skyscrapers. The Boston Bugle was a pre-war newspaper publisher in Boston. It's only mentioned in Fallout 4. You find their papers scattered around the wasteland, sometimes folded, sometimes not. There is very little information about the history of the Boston Bugle Company, its founders. Instead, let's talk about the five stories that were on the front page of the Boston Bugle on the day the bombs dropped. This was their rather humble headquarters. The inside of the building is actually pretty small. It is guarded by a Sol Protectron, and this is the only enemy you'll have to fight in the entire building. There are two terminals in this building, both of which have the exact same stories on them. There are three major journalists who work for the Boston Bugle. The first is Buster Conley. He focused on exposing the crimes of Eddie Winter. We learn from Eddie Winter's holotape number seven that Eddie Winter threatened Buster Connolly for writing a newspaper article that connected Eddie Winter to a monorail construction project hinting at governmental corruption. The other two journalists are Mags Vecchio and Tim Stahl. The first article by Mags Vecchio is Case Closed on Crime Boss Eddie Winter. This article informs the public that the Boston police has closed their case on alleged crime boss Eddie Winter. The police say that there is no evidence that Eddie Winter has been involved in any crimes, and so they say closing the case is important so that they don't condemn an innocent man. Mags Vecchio then points out many of the crimes Eddie has actually done, mentioning petty larceny and even first-degree murder. Eddie Winter, as you recall, is the main antagonist in Nick Valentine's personal companion affinity quest. The original Nick Valentine lived before the war and had his mind saved by the CIT. The Institute later found that mind and used it to program one of their synth prototypes. This synth became known as the Nick Valentine we meet in the game. So Nick Valentine has all of the same memories that the original Nick Valentine, who lived before the war, had. He was a police officer in charge of Operation Winter's End, tasked at finding Eddie Winter. But we learn later in that quest line that the police was actually corrupt. Instead of trying to convict Eddie Winter, they began to protect Eddie Winter to use him as an informant to put other mobsters behind bars. But this was done after Eddie Winter murders Nick Valentine's fiance. Jennifer Lands. Seeking justice for this evil is the main goal of Nick Valentine's side quest, but the murder of Jennifer Lands is even mentioned in this terminal entry. We also learn from this story that Eddie Winter had his own personal sub shop, which you find in the game just next to Andrew's station. The article ends by saying, Eddie Winter, it would seem, has disappeared. And we know where to. During the Eddie Winter questline, we find him in a bunker inside Andrew Station, where he has lived for over 200 years as a ghoul. The next article is also by Mags Vecchio called China Showdown, The Atomic Ultimatum. This piece reads like a long opinion piece that talks about the journalist's personal opinions upon war. This is the type of yellow journalism that we often see in the real world today. But we do learn a few nuggets from it. The first is that the United States was able to create such a powerful army mainly by taxing their citizens. These steep taxes led to widespread poverty. And yet after all of the money that was spent on the war, after all of the lives lives that have been lost, the United States seems to be no closer to ending their war with China. The author correctly says that we have not yet begun to experience the extent of human suffering and ends by saying these are hopeless times. She did not know how correct she was. Next is Boston Food Riots Continue by Buster Conley and the extreme taxation that the United States has on their populace, as mentioned by Mags in the previous article, has consequences that are seen here. We learned that the Army's 184th Infantry Regiment opened fire on a group of unarmed civilians who were protesting outside of a food bank. They opened fire after one of the protesters smashed open a glass window with a rock. Four people were killed and eight others injured. The military defended its actions. Jonathan Corman, a spokesperson for the army, said that the soldiers gave the protesters many explicit verbal warnings and says that hunger is no excuse for civil disobedience, vandalism, or in this case, 
starting a riot. He then points out that, look, it's not just the citizens that are starving. This very regiment that fired upon the civilians had not had a food ration in two days. So it looks like at this point in 2077, everyone was starving. However, the reporter records the experiences of another person who was there at the scene. The 85-year-old grandmother, Hannah Henry, says that the United States military soldiers were laughing, joking about who they were gonna get to shoot first. It was a game to them, she says. This is a really disturbing article to read because we don't get this impression at all when we start the game. We start the game in 2077 before the bombs drop and there's plenty of food in the sole survivor's kitchen. We also find plenty of food scattered around the wasteland in boxes that has survived a nuclear apocalypse and has stuck around for over 200 years. How is it possible that so many people could be starving? If there's so much food lying around the Commonwealth, how could the United States military not have had their food rations in two? days. Can we trust the reports in this article or is this more exaggeration from a media that needs to sell newspapers? The next article by Mags Vecchio is titled White House Remains Empty, Where Is Our President? And this is a really interesting article that ties in Fallout 4 to the events of Fallout 3 and Fallout 2. We learned that for half a year, the President of the United States has abandoned the White House. He hasn't been there. It's been worked by a skeleton crew of staffers. So the journalist asks, where is our president? She then talks about Raven Rock. Now we remember Raven Rock from Fallout 3. Raven Rock was designed to be a shelter for military officials of the United States. Because of this, the military installed the ZAX, ZAX, Artificial Intelligence Unit at the site to coordinate communications between the military and the United States government. But we all know from Fallout 3 that after the bombs dropped, the ZAX artificial intelligence began to become self-aware and over the decades began to create a personality for itself. It called itself John Henry Eden. It then made contact with the Enclave members after the war and became part of the Enclave. Rising in influence until after the death of President Dick Richardson, the Enclave nominated John Henry Eden, the AI program, to be the new president of the Enclave. In this article, we learned that the media had noticed the activity going on at Raven Rock, which was setting up the shelter and installing the artificial intelligence. But they note that neither the president nor his cabinet have been to Raven Rock in over a year because the president and his cabinet went to, that's right, the Poseidon Energy oil rig. The reporter discovers that the president was leading the United States from a Poseidon Energy oil rig just off the coast of San Francisco. She also learns that the name of this oil rig is Control Station Enclave, which she notes gives credence to the long-running rumors of a secret militarized shadow government known as the Enclave that would take control of the United States in the event of a nuclear conflagration. So just before the bombs dropped, the President of the United States and his cabinet retreated to the Enclave oil rig. After the bombs dropped, these people became the shadow government known as the Enclave, who were the primary antagonists in Fallout 2. In Fallout 2, once you destroy the oil rig, the Enclave moves to Raven Rock, where John Henry Eden, the AI program, becomes the new president of the Enclave. I think it's really neat that Fallout 4 weaves all of these things together in one news article written by a Boston Bugle journalist the day the bombs drop. And the final article that was on the front page of the Boston Bugle the day the bombs dropped is the sports section. Boston headed for first World Series win since 1918 by Buster Connolly. He says that it has been 159 years since the Boston Red Sox has won the World Series. Now, obviously we know that this isn't true, but remember Fallout 4 takes place in a divergence that happened in around the late 40s, early 50s. So it was a long running joke for many decades about how the Red Sox had never won a World Series until the Red Sox finally won the World Series in 2000. 2004, 2007, and 2013. But this only happened in our world. According to this article, we know that in the Fallout 4 world, the Red Sox continued to not win the World Series for almost 200 years. But it looks like the Red Sox are getting ready to win. The Red Sox have achieved a three games to none lead over the unbeatable Texas favorite. We learned that the Red Sox has been keeping their star pitcher, Matt the Missile Murtog, in reserve for the entire season. They plan to bring him out for the final game, which is to be played today, where they hope for a World Series victory. Chillingly, the article ends like this. 
but on Saturday, October 23rd, 2077, the only thing that can snatch away victory from the hand of the Red Sox is an act of God or some obscene calamity of man. Tomorrow, my friends, the unthinkable will finally come to pass, and life in Boston will never be the same again. Buster Conley was referring to something completely different when he talked about the unthinkable coming to pass, but he was still right. The unthinkable did come to pass, and life in Boston was never the same again. And that is the full story of the Boston Bugle building that we find in downtown Boston. Not a lot of combat, not a lot of enemies, but a whole lot of really interesting lore that weaves all of these wonderful Fallout games together. What did you think of the Boston Bugle building in Fallout 4? Did you find it? Or did it get lost in your game amongst all of the other skyscrapers in downtown Boston? Did you play Fallout 1 or Fallout 2? And are you pleased that Bethesda made reference to the events of those games? games? Let me know in the comments section below. If you'd like to talk more about Fallout 4 lore with the Oxhorn community on Discord, be sure to click the Discord invitation link in the description of this video. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video today. Thanks for watching from the bottom of my heart, and I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning with a brand new video.